Hello everyone, I'm Said. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can secure your API using role-based access control. ASP.NET offers two middlewares for authentication and authorization. Authentication is responsible for only validating token, getting all the token payload, and then pass this object to the authorization. On the other hand, authorization is responsible for checking current request has access to the current API or not based on your roles. So in this video, I'm going to focus on role-based access control and let's see how we can do it. Let's get started. Here I have a project that contains two endpoints. In this video, I'm going to cover both controller action and also minimal API. So based on your project style, you can choose whatever you, you want to use the control action or minimal API, right? I have one controller here, users controller, required admin roles to access and call this API. And also I have another minimal API here, users minimal, which is simply just return a list of users, right? So in minimal API for adding the authorization, you can use this signature. Also, you can use the policy for checking authorization based on the policy. They call it policy-based authorization. Maybe I create another video to talk and focus on policy-based authorization. But here we are checking roles, okay? Also, in the minimal API, exactly like controllers, we can add authorized attribute like this, okay? I like this signature more, just like controller. So I'm going to remove it. And then our minimal API will be protected by this authorized attribute, okay? For adding authentication and authorization, you need to add those middlewares in DI, like this services, add authentication, add JWT bearer. And also at authorization, here we have those middlewares as well. So simply ASP.NET will add two middlewares for authentication and authorization, right? For using at JWT bearer, you need to use this Nugget package for ASP.NET Core authentication JWT bearer. That's it for adding the authentication and authorization to your API. I just added the default implementation for checking token. If you don't know how you can add the authentication part in your API, I have another video talking about OpenID Connect, how you can validate token using OpenID Connect. You can check that video as well. Let's uh, run the API and let's see what we have. Our API is running. We have two API users minimal and also users which is controller action. I'm going to call the API using Postman. I'm going to call users API. So as you can see, it threw in 401 as unauthorized. It means when we add those attributes authorized, all the APIs needs to pass the authorization header. So how we can create a JWT token? I'm going to use a feature which is introduced in .NET 7 for creating a local JWT token, which is really cool. For creating JWT token locally, you can use this .NET user JWTs create. That's it. ASP.NET added this feature just for testing locally if you want to create some JWT to test. So if I create a new JWT, it will add JWT token for me. So let's see what is inside this token as a payload. Simply, I can paste this token here. You can see the subject is Said, and then audience, these URLs, expiration, issue add, and also the issuer is .NET user JWTs. When you add and create a JWT using this command, you need to go to your project path as well. It will automatically add some configuration to your app settings. So here, if you check it, you can see the authentication schemes, bearer, and then valid audiences just for testing locally. It's really cool. And also it will add a user secret to your project for putting key for JWT signature. It means if I just pass this token to my API as an authorization header, it should work. So I'm gonna add authorization. I'm using bearer scheme and let's call the API. So now the API is returning 403. 403 is returning from authorization middleware. That 401 was coming from the authentication. Okay, it means our JWT token is valid, but this JWT doesn't have role admin. So for this reason, because our API required admin roles, 
and this JWT doesn't exist admin rules, it will through 403. What we can do here, simply when we want to create a JWT token, we can call it admin. Okay, so you can see roles admin, and then if I use this JWT, yes, it returned okay, it means our JWT is correct, right? So you can use this way when your identity provider put the roles for current users. For example, you are using odd zero or the, your custom identity provider. So when user logged in, inside that token payload, you can put the roles for the current user so that your API will work. But in most cases, your identity provider is only responsible for checking the user, like user password, or you are using the, for example, Google social media login, like Google, Facebook, or other platforms. So usually they are only responsible for authenticating user this email this user is valid and then they will give you the token so in real world application usually you want to just get the token get the user id and then in your local database you will add the roles for this user so how we can do that let's see here i am going to add another options for the a at jwt barrel what is the point here we want to, once a request coming to our application, first of all, that JWT token should be valid. We don't need to worry about it because this JWT bearer authentication middleware of the ASP.NET will check this part. And the second part, we want to add the roles based on the user ID in our database and then manipulate principal identity in the context. And at the end, authorization middleware will check those claims. And if it's OK, then it allows requests to move. We can use authorization filter or even custom middleware for adding these kind of claims to the principal identity. But here I like to use a more easy way to do that. So I'm going to put some options here. Options. Okay. In these options, there is some events. You can add some events to the add JWT bearer if I want to check what we have here. So as you can see, let me just remove extra namespace. We have multiple events here, like ones on forbidden or on authentication fail, or you can handle all of the events because this at JWT bearer will validate the token and also validate authorization as well for your request. I'm going to use these events here on token validated. It means we are going to tell the, let me just accept this suggestion after we need to change this one let it be like that for now so on token validated it means the token is already validated and it's okay now we know that we need to add the roles of the current user to the claims and then authorization will work okay so what we can do we can add context.principal.identity which is the current one that the authentication middleware is already filled this object for us so we can have access to the identity and we can be sure that this identity provider is not null otherwise if that token wasn't valid middleware through the 401 okay so let's see, we can add claim, but here I'm gonna cast this object to claim identity so that we can access to the method for adding a claim. We can be sure that this one is not null and also the principal. So I'm gonna add one claim. We have some claims types, which is contain some standard name for the claims. We are going to use the role one. We require admin role, right? On the fly, if I just add admin role to all of the requests that is coming, it should work because already we add the claims for the roles. So we are telling the authorization middleware this request containing the admin role. So you can allow this request to go. Let's run the project and uh, let's see uh, it's working or not. 
So you can see that still I'm getting 200. In any case, for example, if I just put some extra uh, character to the token, I want to use a token which is not valid, our authentication will return 401. So we are good at our implementation, right? So if I just put a breakpoint here, we can see for every request, it will hit here, current one, before adding the add claims. The claims doesn't have the role claims here, but we are manually add the claims for admin role and it will valid to go, right? Okay, nice. And also let's just check the minimal API as well. So also the minimal API is working. But still in a real world application, you want to get your user roles from the database, right? That's easy as well. Here we can have access to our dependency injection. Currently I've added this interface user repository, which containing a method for get user roles, having the username and just I return the admin role just for testing. How we can get the user repository here? Okay, thank you. So I am already using the call pilot and it's really helpful for me. I'm getting the I user repository from the dependency injection because I have access to the HTTP context for the current request so that we have access to all the services added to the dependency injection. I can say user roles, yeah still i'm gonna call this method using the name in the identity and also passing the cancellation token using request abort i have another video very old video about uh, how to use the cancellation token in the api so that's really helpful if you have time you can watch that video as well here i don't want to freeze the main thread so i'm going to use the async pattern here so i already got the user roles from our database we need to add claims actually we need to create a list of claims based on the user roles and then add it to the identity right i'm gonna create a claims simply we can select and then create a list of roles like this and after we can use the add claims and then adding the list of claims to our current identity no need to use this one and also extra line these uh, lines we are calling our database for getting the roles based on the current username so can be the user id whatever you have in your token payload and then add a list of claims based on the user roles to the identity let's uh, run the project again i think we are good to go okay right user roles contains one admin and then here we are creating list of claims and then let the user request go. That's it. It's returning 200 for us. It means we successfully added the user roles from our database to the, uh, the current request. And then we successfully authorize all of the requests coming to our API, right? Here, I just showed you how simple it is for adding the role-based access control in the ASP.NET. I know that there is lots of other ways like using authorization filter or a custom authorization middleware. Please let me know if you are using another ways for implementing the role-based access control so that I can know what is the best way for doing that. In next video, I'm going to cover policy-based authorization in ASP.NET. So if you like it, please leave a comment for me. So that's it. I think uh, we just covered using this command as well for .NET 7. That was really interesting for me. I just wanted to show you how you can easily create the JWT locally. And also we just add JWT bearer for validating token and also added another event for adding the extra claims to the authorization, right? So here we just add a role and then authorization middleware is responsible for checking this role with this authorized attribute for our API. That's it for now. Thank you for your time.